Hey, what's up? It's Madeline Paquette. So I just bought a crap load of wine online. I bought three cases of wine, that's 36 bottles, all different wines, and my out the door price ended up costing me just eight, actually it was less than $18 a bottle shipped. So these wines right here represent the full bodied red wines in my collection that's gonna help me survive through the next few months. I wanna show you how I picked what I picked and why. Now the interesting thing about this particular style of wine is that it is one of the most in-demand styles of wine. So grape varieties like Cabernet Sauvignon or Nebbiolo command very high prices. Also, it's important to remember that full-bodied red wines are one of the more expensive wines to produce well. So when I'm in this price range, the under $20 price range, I really need to keep my expectations in line I'm expecting these wines to be great, but probably a lot of midweek daily drinkers. And then I also need to maybe look for alternative grape varieties from lesser known regions so I can really find great value. My first two wines come from California. This region up here is called the North Coast and it contains Napa and Sonoma. It's a very popular tourist destination and thus wines are a lot more expensive. If you look right next door, you can find some other regions that produce great values. Skyline comes from Lodi, and Lodi is a hot, hot region. And knowing that, I'm expecting to find grapes that do well in hot climates to make great wines here. So no Chardonnay, but maybe something like Zinfandel is gonna perform exceptionally well. And sure enough, this wine here, if you look up the details, it's a kitchen sink blend of Zinfandel, Grenache, Tempranillo, Petite Syrah, and Carignan. These are all grapes that do well in warm climates. I'm not expecting this wine to be collectible or to completely blow my mind, but I bet you it'll pair excellently with barbecue. This next wine, Broadside, comes from Paso Robles. Most people think of Cabernet Sauvignon in California and they go to Napa in their minds. But what you might not know is Paso Robles actually produces a ton of Cabernet wines and Cabernet blends. Of course, this region is a lot hotter than Napa, so you really want to look for blends in this area so the balance is right. And sure enough, this wine right here, Broadside, ends up being a blend of Cabernet Merlot and Petit Verdot. So it's essentially a Bordeaux style blend. My next two wines come from a region that just can't help itself and make delicious full-bodied red wines. And yes, it's Australia. These both come to us from this little region in South Australia called McLaren Vale. Now, I love McLaren Vale. They make outstanding Syrah, AKA Shiraz. This one is made with organic grapes but it has your standard level of sulfites added. And this one is also made with organic grapes, but it's 100% organic wine with no added sulfites. Now, those of you who are afraid of sulfites, you really shouldn't be. Well, at least not most of you. I'll cover this more in another video and link the article in case you're curious to know more right now. What excites me about these wines is this producer is obviously trying to reduce their sulfites and they're experimenting with this label to offer a more natural style wine. I wanna see how these two taste compared to one another. While we're on the topic of Southern Hemisphere, I actually purchased a couple of wines from two other regions you should know about, and that's South Africa and Argentina. On the Southern tip of South Africa is where you'll find the majority of winemaking in this country. This country makes incredible effing wines, and I wanna see more of them in the United States. The region's most famous for Chenin Blanc and Cabernet Sauvignon, but they do a lot more than just that. This wine right here comes from a region called Stellenbosch, which is right around here. And Stellenbosch is to South Africa, kind of like what Napa is to California. It's the most famous, well-known region in the area. And this is another Value blend wine. It's a blend of Syrah, Morved, Carignan, Tanat, Grenache, and Cinso. So again, this is another warm, warm region. So they're using warm climate grapes. And 
I'm guessing, based on the label alone, that this wine might be a little bit peppery. Argentina is most famous for their Malbec, but that doesn't mean they don't make some other outstanding wine varieties as well. The majority of wine production happens in Mendoza and around this area here, and sure enough, that's exactly where this wine is from. I'm excited about this wine because it's by one of those flying winemakers who gets around and produces a lot of consistent wines, and his name is Paul Hobbs. This is another second label wine that I'm looking to get some value out of. Now I'm gonna say this out loud because I feel like somebody has to say it, but Portugal makes some of the most amazing wines and they're super underrated. Now one of my theories why Portuguese wines don't seem to get around so much is because they're made with very unique indigenous grapes that pretty much only grow in Portugal. This dog right here, Esperau, comes from this region over here, the Alentejo. Uh, this area produces amazing olive oil, they grow wheat, and they also do excellent, excellent grapes. This wine is an Alentejano blend. It is actually a blend of Cabernet Sauve, Torga Franca, and Tempranillo. So it's some more common varieties that you're used to. And because I'm so familiar with this producer and I've seen their wines and tasted them, I feel very confident that this wine is gonna be awesome. My next wine right here is a calculated risk, but I'm extremely excited about it. The Dao region is located just south of the Douro region right here and is producing some of the most exciting wines in Portugal right now. What makes me feel like this is a calculated risk is it is uh, demarcated by the importer, Skernik. So this means the Skernik guys went over to Portugal, they found what they think is a great, looks like a cooperative, um, in Portugal and is like, hey, we want to import this to the US. It's worth our time and effort and we're even willing to put our brand name on the front label. So I follow that importer and so when I saw that this was something that they imported and I saw that it was from the Dow and I saw the price, I got super excited. This, to me, might be one of the most high quality wines in the bunch, although we'll have to see when we taste it. Speaking of wines from the Iberian Peninsula, I absolutely did get something from Spain. Here's a fun fact for you. So Spain actually has the largest area of any country dedicated to vineyards. There is something like two million acres. This wine right here comes from around this part of the country. Actually, it comes from right around here. And the grape variety is actually called Bobal. Very, very unknown grape outside of Spain, and yet it's one of their most, their top three most planted grape varieties. So the Spanish have really been working on producing quality wines with Bobal, and we just haven't seen a whole lot in the US. So I got this wine because I like Bobal. It tends to produce some really bold blueberry, sort of blackberry notes, and I'm excited to see what this wine does on the palate. It is like near impossible for me to go on a shopping trip for wine and not buy one, two, or, or three things from France. Now France, if you're just getting into wine, is not an easy place to get to know. So I went, I kept my search in the south. This area down here, to me, produces a lot of bolder wines, fruitier style wines, really delicious crowd pleaser styles of wines. This wine right here comes from a place called the Rhone Valley. Now, the Rhone has a northern part, which can be a little bit more expensive, but the southern part is where you find a lot of value. I love to dig into the Grenache variety. Grenache, aka Garnacha, really is so undervalued, and the fruit flavors are bombastic. The alcohol levels can get a bit high, but this grape variety will love you inside and out. And that's exactly what this guy includes over here. This is Rastau, is a crew of the Cote de Rhone area. So it's one of the little 19 subcrews that are in the Rhone Valley. And Rastau actually originally was most known for sweet wines. And because it's not so known as a dry wine producer, it tends to fly under the radar. 
even though this area is starting to get really expensive. And sure enough, when you look at the blend of this wine, you can see it's a Grenache Syrah and Morved. This wine actually is an import by the retailer that I bought these wines from, from K&L Wine Merchants. Um, I've been following K&L for, I don't know, over t well over 10 years, and they've always done a really good job picking wines and picking for quality and sticking to producers that they like over time, and I really like their program for that reason. So I thought, oh, what the hell, I'll give your GSM a try. This next wine right here is by a large, well-known producer. This is Lafage. It comes from a region called the Cote Catalans. So it's one step down from your high qual highest quality tier in France. That being said, Cote Catalans is a large area that produces great grapes and probably great wines. And because I know this producer, Lafage, I have like a general level of trust that this wine is going to be Yum yum delicious. And sure enough, when you look up the makeup of this wine, the Narissa, it is a Grenache and Syrah, and it's made with organic grapes. My last wine in the lineup, I've got to admit to you, I'm pretty excited about this guy. This is a Madaron. Madaron is in a region called Southwest France, it's right here, and you can see it's really spread out. They grow a bunch of different kinds of grapes and it's really hard to get to know. And it's small and it's weird. And what I like about Madaron, let me just tell you, this area is famous for a grape variety called Tanat. You know how dark chocolate has like high levels of antioxidants? This dog right here might have antioxidants level, levels about three times more than a bar of dark chocolate. <laughs> Not that wine is good for your health. It still has alcohol in it. So Madaron is a wine, again, that uses Tanat in the blend. This wine, Tanat, I know it's exceptionally age-worthy because it has such high tannin, so this 2014 vintage doesn't bother me at all. In fact, it might be a little bit smoothed out um, with this amount of time in bottle. Um, again, this isn't 100% Tanat. It's got uh, mostly Tanat and some Cab Franc, maybe to round out and soften it a bit. Um, but this one is probably the one I'm most excited about to taste from France. All right, so that's my lineup of full-bodied reds in this haul. Uh, if you like what we're doing, uh, you'll notice I use some maps in this. These are actually maps that I design, and you can buy them on the Wine Folly store. That's shop.winefolly.com. Or if you just want to get started in wine, definitely check out the Wine Folly book. And this is an amazing visual guide that will help you Get your feet wet. Oh, one last thing. If you're a winery and you're watching this and maybe you made one of these wines, please add your wines to Global Wine Database. It helps your winery get found. All right, ta-ta for now.